Over the first remarkable 10 days of the protest, People in Power filmed exclusively and behind the scenes with a core group of young activists from the April 6th opposition movement. As Elizabeth Jones reveals, they had spent many months planning and organizing for these momentous times, even taking lessons from other revolutions about how to mobilize popular support. They say it's been a leaderless revolution, but somewhere in the side streets of Cairo, there are leaders and they're planning. Ahmed Maher is the leader of this April 6th youth movement, the main instigator of this revolution, and the one to whom they turn. In the street below their ad hoc offices, the revolution they spawned is in full swing. There's almost a carnival atmosphere, but this is not a spontaneous uprising. The revolution has been in the making for three years. It was at a textile strike in 2008 that the April 6th youth movement was born. Ahmed Maher had enlisted support for the workers on his Facebook site, gaining 70,000 followers. The demonstration was the biggest Egypt had seen in years and inspired the creation of the April 6th youth movement. They began work mobilizing for democratic change. They've been trying to get people on the streets ever since. It's not easy in politically apathetic Egypt, the population worn down by decades living in fear under a corrupt, repressive regime. With no history of dissent in Egypt, Ahmed Maher looked outside for help to people who'd successfully overthrown dictators, like Otpor, the Serbian student movement that toppled Slobodan Milosevic. Serge Popovic was leader of that revolution. He shared his first-hand experience with April 6th. One of the key things is to understand that the nonviolent struggle is a form of warfare. Nonviolent discipline, this is key. Because violence contaminates your movement and creates the, your opponent uh, excuse for using police and military forces. Also, there is this big problem with media and violence. If you have a march of 100,000 people and one single idiot throwing stone, he's going to be the star of the day. And this is how media operates. So you need to avoid this violence in many different uh, ways. And this is specifically crucial at this stage. Mohammed Adel came back from Serbia with videos and teaching aids. Popovic, in his own voice, explaining tactics. The keys to success are unity, discipline and planning. Keep people engaged with chants and slogans and be clear in your aims. It appears to work. April 6 has scrambled to set up the secret headquarters, a nerve center for what they are starting to call the revolution. It's a borrowed office and it's rapidly turning into an operation room for something bigger than even they could have hoped for. Ahmed Maher is coordinating his people, conscious of the responsibility on his shoulders. It's 
It's now Thursday night. Tens of thousands of protesters have been on the streets since Tuesday. There have been clashes with police and some arrests. Ahmed Maher is, as ever, on his computer, communicating with his activists online. It turns out his right-hand man, Mohammed Adel, has been arrested. Friday dawns. They're calling it the Day of Rage. Mohammed Adal has been freed overnight. He's drafting a press release with Islam Luka. He's straight back into work. Now he's sorting out a list of mosques and churches where people can gather, arranging the routes the protesters will take towards Tahrir Square. Maher's plan is that after Friday prayers across the capital, marches will converge on Tahrir Square. <laughs> Mobile phones and the internet, the key organizational tools of April 6th, all cut off by the government. They're going prepared in case of attack. There are guidelines on what to wear and how to act in the streets. They go in groups of four or five. They don't wear April 6 insignia. This is not about the group, they say, but about unity of all Egyptians in the goal of deposing the Mubarak regime. But not everyone is happy with what's happening. Back at headquarters, they've been donated a satellite dish and TV. With rumors abounding, the only way to get any information is via satellite TV news. Now Barat, uh, Baratai and his followers, they are being, they are being based in, uh, in Giza Square and uh, some news about uh, 4,000 soldiers from the army are in the streets, now in the main squares in the streets. We don't know exactly, is it uh, right or wrong, because no, no way to communicate with anybody. <laughs> But then things start to get hairy. We are beating people in the streets. One group of protesters is being prevented by police from getting to Tahrir Square. Protesters have been forced up side roads to the April 6th headquarters, the police in hot pursuit. It looks like they'll be pushed back. But more protesters are arriving from another district. The police can't guard every access route. So the crowd swells. It's April 6th strategy in action. Then surprise, everything stops for prayers. The police turn their backs in a gesture of respect. But once prayers are over, the protesters are back to it. People appear to be surrounding the police. And then they break through to Tahrir Square. Despite the excitement, the day ends on a bad note when police are withdrawn from the streets and looting starts. That night, they watched the reports of the events they put in train. The ruling party headquarters is on fire. It's confirmed the army is on the streets, and the police have been completely withdrawn. The protesters are delighted to see the back of the police and their brutality. 
They hope the army will stop the violence. It's just six days since Ahmed Maher first inspired his supporters to come out for that police day protest. His mind is already on the future. With the demonstrations going well, Maher feels confident enough to hold a press conference in the safe house. They want the world to know they have victory in their sights, but they'll need support to be victorious. Ahmed Maher is well aware that the military is crucial to the outcome of this process, and having the army on board was an early priority. حصل اتصال من بعض الضباط جوه الجيش ده الكلام ده كان يوم السبت اللي فات وعرضوا ان هم ممكن يساندونا ولكن القوى السياسيه عملنا اتصالات سريعه بدعي وايمن نور ومعظم الشخصيات السياسيه ولكن فضلوا ان هو يكون الحديث مع القياده المركزيه للجيش مش مع احد الفروع في الجيش يعني.